Is it better to stack silver and gold bullion or is it better to stack silver and gold collectibles? Let's talk about it. How you doing everybody? Welcome to Empire Precious Metals. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure you blast that subscribe button and get the bell notification clicked. That way you get updated with any new content. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, what got me prompted to do this video actually is the fact that uh, very soon, you will all be seeing brand new content on my channel. You're going to want to stick around for it, but essentially, it's a collaboration between myself and Bayshore Bullion Exchange and uh, the owner, Andrew Hen. So you're going to definitely want to stay tuned. Something big is coming to the channel. But last night, I was doing a live stream on Instagram. I was just doing a giveaway to my uh, private deals group. And... I was telling everybody on there about this new venture, this new program that's going to be on my channel. And I asked everybody, you know, what are some topics that you're going to want for me and uh, Andrew to discuss? And you guys had a lot of great suggestions, threw out a lot of good ideas. And one of the ones that stuck with me was, and I forget who threw this one out there, but essentially asked the question, what's better to stack, silver and gold bullion or collectibles? Now, those of you that are familiar with my channel, you know that I am a bullion dealer. You know that I uh, buy and sell a lot of silver and gold, but I don't just sell silver and gold bullion. I also dabble. I guess I shouldn't really say dabble because I do sell quite a bit of the collectible stuff. But we're not talking about what's best for you as, you know, let's say like a, a reseller or a dealer. We're talking about this from the stacker perspective. And when you're talking about stacking, essentially the fundamentals, at least in my opinion, the fundamentals about stacking are that you want to purchase silver and gold for weight. And you're looking to buy the stuff that's the most liquid, and you're looking to get it for the cheapest amount possible. So right off the bat, we can say that that would essentially disqualify almost every single item that you see on my desk. And I don't know how well you're able to see. I mean, the, the stuff stretches all the way over here. We've got semi-numismatic stuff, coins, uh, dice coins, um, snow globes. I mean, coins that are snow globes. I mean, st crazy, crazy. Um, but... If you are talking about stacking for weight, this stuff, you do not want to go near it at all. I would say that you would want to go for the, you know, basic, generic, silver rounds. Um, obviously, I would say silver ounces, uh, the, the 10 ounce bars are the way to go. Um, and if you're looking to buy gold bullion, I would say stay away from fractional gold like this. And I would say either get yourself one ounce gold bars like this, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Those are a little harder to unload or, you know, bullion coins like the gold buffaloes, those types of, and, and gold maple leaves and gold Krugerrands and, and the, all those, you know, government backed bullion coins, silver, Britannia's, etc. Why do I say to go with that type of bullion as opposed to the collectible stuff? Well, first and foremost, I would say that the collectible stuff that you see here on the desk, like the Disney stuff, um, pirate themed things like this right here. This is like the Queen Anne's Revenge. Uh, I forget if this is a two ounce thing. It's a two ounce coin. Things like this have ridiculous premiums. I mean, I'm talking ridiculous premiums. I mean, you want to see like ridiculous, like this is an example. This is a one ounce coin that cost right around a hundred dollars, one ounce. All right. Whereas you buy a silver Buffalo round, one ounce costs you maybe around $24. All right. So essentially you can get, you know, between four, maybe even five of these for every one of these, these might go like 110, 115, et cetera. All right. Um, these ex ex extreme, extreme premiums, right? These are like the gangster coins and they've got, they cost like, uh, on the wholesale side, right around like 365 bucks or whatever, but they go for like 700 retail. But the point is 
this stuff is stupid to buy in 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 the sense of stacking um i would forbid you to do that um but no so why am i talking against the stuff that i primarily sell you know again this is talking about what's better to stack silver and gold bullion or collectibles again if you're talking stacking you're doing for weight if you're buying fractional stuff like these tiny one gram bars these right now cost around 85 dollars um, do the math, 85 times 31.1, that would give you, uh, whatever amount, I didn't even do the math, but whatever that would equate to as, co as opposed to, let, let's say like a gold Buffalo here, that's going to cost you right around the time of the making of this video, $2,100. You're going to see a crazy amount of premium on this stuff. You're better off getting stuff almost like volume discounting, right? So like 10 ounce bars, um, I, I think like 10 ounce bars, generic stuff, that stuff is the best because you're not expending a, a crazy amount of money right off the bat. You're getting some volume and some bulk added to the stack. And because you are buying, you know, 10 ounces at a time, as opposed to one ounce at a time, you are, uh, in, essentially lowering your per ounce cost. And that's true across the board for just about everything. You, the the higher in weight you go, the less you are going to be spending per ounce, as opposed to if you go fractional and the lower in weight you go, the more premium you are going to be paying. Why is that? That's because the process that it takes to stamp out these tiny itty bitty one gram bars and get them put in these assay cards is going to take the same amount of time as it would to do one ounce gold bars. So the cost of labor, cost of packaging, cost of mailing this stuff out, uh, it, it's, it doesn't really make sense. So what I would say, if I can recap before I talk about one more important thing in this video, the most important thing would be to you know stick to the bullion generic stuff or like the lower premium government backed type of coins, not even silver eagles per se, more like Britannia's, Maple Leafs, etc. But you want to go for no lower than one ounce. And that, in my opinion, is both for silver and for gold. And then when it comes to silver, I would argue that you're better off going for like 10 ounce bars. Okay. Now, putting that aside, when it comes to selling, okay, when it comes to selling, one of the benefits though that you have in getting this type of stuff that you see displayed across the desk, the benefits of that stuff is that not only do you have the silver and the gold content of these coins, but you also have the collectability. As I bang into my tripod, the collectability is really something that appeals to so many people. There might be someone who happens to be a big Disney fan or loves Mickey Mouse or whatever the case may be, but they're not, might not be into precious metals, but you know what? Somebody sees this as a gift and they're like, you know what? This is awesome. My, my father would love this coin, right? Or more recently, these things, in my opinion, are so, so cool. And these are brand new, a very, very brand new product, never been done before. Silver and gold, slabbed and graded, sports card coins. This is something that is boggling the minds of many people. They can't wrap their heads around the fact that they are sports cards, that they're pure silver, pure gold, but they are also coins what makes these coins they have denominations stamped on the back they are government minted coins albeit they are you know relatively thin this is a half gram of gold and this is i think three grams of gold but they are sports cards they are slabbed and graded collectibles but they are also coins so you are getting a variety of of different hobbies covered with this product somebody who's a mike tyson fan they might maybe they don't give a crap about silver and gold coins but they're into collecting sports cards here you go i got this for you for christmas i thought you would enjoy this it's a they're like oh wow thanks what I, wow that's cool is what is a hologram no it's a pure silver this is made out of precious metals pure silver coin card i don't even know what to call it so 
And by the way, shameless plug, you will be able to buy these on my website in the not too distant future. But these are the very first of its kind. The point is, these things are expensive. You have the premiums that you're going to be paying way over spot than you would on, you know, your generic stuff. But then you've got the collectability and then the resale value of these types of things are so much better, so superior, right? Uh, again, going back to these gangster coins here, you've got a two ounce coin here that cost, you know, a dealer such as myself around uh, 300 bucks, 350 bucks. But the resale, the retail on these are around seven hundred dollars. Check out the eBay comps sold prices, and you will see these go for around seven hundred bucks. So yeah, you're doubling your money. You're ex you're spending a lot more. The silver content in this is only worth about fifty dollars tops, forty eight bucks. That's that's the silver content. But you're paying for the artistry of it. The mintage is a very low mintage. I believe only five hundred of these were minted. It's the first in the series. Um, and it's just a really badass coin. So um, you you kind of have to juggle the different uh, things in which you are looking to do when it comes to collecting, right? And when it comes to stacking. But from a stacking standpoint, guys, um, you want to stick to the heavier weights and to, to uh, you know, no less than like one ounce. And this stuff is good if you know what you're doing. And this stuff here can earn you a lot of money, but you got to be careful. I hope that answers your question. And uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think is better? Bullion, run-of-the-mill, generic stuff like this? Or collectibles such as the items shown here before you? Let us know in the comments.